Greetings my dear students. Today we will first consider project profitability and initiate discussions on project financing. Introduction. Projection of the profitability of any new project over its lifetime is important for a realistic evolution resulting hopefully in its implementation. Important point is that we carry out the profitability evolution over its entire lifespan. For chemical project, the lifetime is considered to be 10 years for project evolution purpose only. The profitability or net income arising out of any project could be positive that is the profit or negative that is the loss. The profitability of a proposed project over its lifetime is presented in the form of estimate of working results. This is very much similar to profit and loss account accompanied by balance sheet in an annual report of an ongoing business. Here we shall consider how to estimate the working results of a proposed project under review so that its financial evaluation becomes possible. For a proposed project, income is essentially generated from sale of product, by products or co-products. During the estimation of income, we do not consider interest earned on intermediate investments for the sake of simplicity and also because it is not the objective of the project. It is further assumed that market scenario is an ideal one, thereby product manufacture is sold in totality. In other words, inventories of product, byproduct, co-product, etc. are nil. Sales are the income resulting from selling product, byproducts and co-products and the excess utility that is power and steam if any. The prevailing market price of all the above products is considered for the estimate of sale for project life span of 10 years. There being zero inventory, capacity utilization in the cost of production schedule would be identical to the quantity sold. Gross profit, total sales realization less gross cost of production is gross profit. That is gross profit equal to sales minus gross cost of production. The elements of gross cost of production have been discussed earlier in cost of production topic. Since capacity utilization varies from year to year, gross profit also varies from year to year. Operating profit, financial expenses, the interest on term loan and working capital and appreciation are accounted to get a realistic estimate of profit. The financial expenses include interest for that particular year on various borrowings, mainly term loan and working capital. It does not include loan repayment. That is a very important thing. The financial expenses do not include loan repayment. By providing depreciation as per the Companies Act, we keep aside some profit to make provision for major repairs, replacements, etc. for all depreciable assets to function. This would then give a realistic estimate of profit. Of course, please note that depreciation is used as a notional cost. Operating profit is equal to gross coffee profit minus financial expenses minus depreciation. Please note that the company has flexibility of using written down value method or straight line method of depreciation. However, for chemical projects while carrying out the feasibility study, the straight line method of depreciation is considered in the above equation. So, corporate tax is income tax 
levied on business houses, that is the organizations or enterprises, is known as the corporate tax, also sometimes referred as the corporation tax. The corporate tax rate is decided by the Ministry of Finance and presented by Honorable Finance Minister during the budget presented to the nation. Let X be the percentage of corporate tax. We then have corporate tax equal to X profit for tax divided by 100. So profit after tax is equal to gross profit minus financial expression minus corporate tax, dividend. Dividend is the return on equity and it is paid out of the profit on the shareholders that is equity holders who invest their money look forward to have returns in the form of dividend highest than those obtained by the interest on fixed capital in bank. The equity holder takes this view because he is risking his money by having investment into a project whose success is unpredictable. Higher is the risk rating of the project, higher is the expectation of dividend. While paying dividend, care must be taken about futuristic needs of the capital that is required to overcome the unforeseen maintenance requirement, repay the term loan as per agreed schedule with the financial institution, make provision for equity participation in new projects by way of expansion, diversification, backward or forward integration. One way of doing this is to consider depreciation as a notional cause and keep aside straight line method depreciation before declaring the dividend. In other words, profit for dividend can be computed as profit for dividend equal to gross profit minus financial expenses minus corporate tax minus SLM method depreciation. Now let us look at net cash accruals. Net cash accruals of any pro project are computed after allocation of dividend. The depreciation being a notional cost, SLM depreciation added back to the profit after disbursing dividend to yield net cash accruals. So net cash accruals equal to profit for dividend minus dividend plus SLM method of depreciation or this is equal to operating profit minus corporate tax minus dividend plus SLM method of depreciation. However, the board of directors can still recommend some dividend. This would then mean that the business houses pay dividend without paying any corporate tax to the federal government. Many business houses have taken legitimate advantage of such a situation by having continuous big projects under the same organization. Recently to overcome this apparent anomaly, the Ministry of Finance has introduced a minimum alternative tax. Details of computation of minimum alternative tax and regular corporate tax having various benefits under Section 80 of income tax are excluded from the scope of this presentation. Because they keep on changing as we are in the process of liberalization and globalization, the students are advised to keep a track of these aspects through annual budget presented by the Honorable Finance Minister. Here we are presenting in a table for a hypothetical value of for 1 to 10 years, okay, supposing when we have got profit before depreciation is 100 in the first year, then by depreciation by written down value, which is by company's law for a continuous plant is 25% and so that 
we can reduce it down the taxable profit we can calculate and from taxable profit we can arrive at a corporate tax which is a 35 percent of the taxable profit the first year second year third year and so on and so forth we can go on computing depreciation values taxable profit also and sort of a corporate tax okay thank you very much for patient hearing